BBC News Round. Remember BBC News Round when we were very little? Well, it's come under fire for an online article teaching children about white privilege. The article on the BBC website headlined, White Privilege, what is it and how can it be used to help others? Claims that people in positions of power use white privilege to keep and maintain their highest status in society. So why is the BBC teaching this highly controversial and racially divisive theory to children as young as six? Well, you may well ask. Well, let's talk to uh, Alka Segal Cuthbert, who's the director of Don't Divide Us, a UK organisation providing a common sense voice on race. A good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Julia. Thank you. I have to say, when I was sent this, Alka, I thought, I, I'm not joking. I actually thought that this was some sort of spoof. I thought, what on earth is you trying to do? I remember it from the John Craven days. I'm that old. Um, and, uh, and it was a wonderful source of news for young people. And I certainly remember, you know, my daughter, uh, you know, what, looking at it when she was younger. And, and you, you could see like, his safe, impartial news, giving kids the facts and making sure that it was, it was an environment where they would learn about important things but not see stuff that, frankly, as a parent, you'd be worried about them seeing. And here we are, website for a, 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 a children's show that is aimed at, what, six to 12-year-olds, basically teaching them that, yeah, white people uh, have white privilege, black and Asian people um, are basically, you know, uh, are, you know, under our thumb, and, and that we should be anti-racist rather than just anti, you know, against racism. Um, tell us what you thought of it. Well, um, yeah, I remember John Craven too. I mean, it's, it's funny, you know, news round, I mean, it should be news. This isn't even news, right? Yeah. White privilege is not news. It's a belief from a radical, politically partisan ideology. Critical race theory is one subsection of it. Um, it's not just on one website, it's on at least three. Um, and it and I, as to why they're doing it, I mean, your guess is as good as mine, Julia. I, I mean, I'm baffled. Other than other than that, they see the BBC thinks it's on a mission. Yeah, it's propaganda. Change. That's what it is. It's well, propaganda. It, it, it is indoctrination, right? Because there, there are no, there's very little historical evidence. What there is is very selective. Um, there's a very kind of cavalier, you know, few stats thrown in which are not referenced, they're not yeah. uh, explicated in any way. It's essentially one person's political view, Professor Andrew K Kahindi Andrews, who, you know, he's a professor of black studies and he's a, a, an educational activist, yeah. right? That's what he's famous for. Yeah. I'm not saying ban him, no, but I'm saying not. what on earth is the BBC doing? Putting out this content yeah uncontested, with no opposing view, yeah. not even acknowledging that there's another viewpoint um, And that's, that's the thing, isn't it? It's put out as if this is fact. It's actually critical race theory. It has no basis in, in fact at all, actually. It's a complete load of abject nonsense. It is, I think, one of the most <laughs> racist theories going about because it only sees people as race. But it's got a whole section. It's like, how can I use my white privilege to help others? So at that point, you're already, the assumption is, is that what is an ally? Someone who uses their white privilege for good is called an ally. Allies are people on the same side who work together. Um, and you say nothing that is actually, um, that, that is actually challenging. It's like some people claim this and some people claim that. In no way does that do that. But also quoting Kinder Andrews, I mean, who talked about the Queen, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth, as you know, a symbol of white privilege, and, and compared Winston Churchill to Adolf Hitler. I mean, this is absolutely untenable. And, and there's talk about this need not just being against racism, not just not being a racist, um, Martin Luther King style, not seeing colour and judging people on the character of their, of, of what, you know, their, what they say and what they do, not their skin colour, but being anti-racist. And of course, if you tell a child at primary school or in early and secondary school, as this age group is, is aimed at, you know, you should be an anti-racist, and they're a nice child, they're going to say, yes, I should be. But anti-racism is just a newfangled modern version of racism, isn't it? Seeing colour everywhere. It, it is, it is, it, it's, it is, you're quite right. It is re-racialising British culture. Mm. Um, it, it's doing more than that, I think, in my view. It's, um, it is, it is sort of actively promoting a very kind of it's de it's it's delegitim delegitimizing all our kind of normal ideas and values about British history and British culture. 
which of course can be open for discussion and criticism, but this isn't really doing that. It's just saying the very thing itself is yeah. racist to the core. That is a very dangerous thing to do. And it's it, it's a climatizing chill, it's it's acclimatizing a very low intellectual level in education, yeah. a very reductive view of how to understand the world, and a view that sees the world in terms of preferred victim groups and preferred oppressors. Yeah. That has real life consequences, right? We are seeing that in the streets of London this past week. Yeah. We're seeing that in the selective rather than the universal application of the law and our normal social standards. So I would say now, whereas a couple, maybe two years ago, I would say it was a silly, stupid, intellectually and ethically kind of dubious theory. I think now, you know, the acceptance of it in, among mainstream institutions is actually posing a real political yeah. And that's it. For... We'll be accused of stoking a culture war when absolutely not. This is this is new stuff. This is unproven stuff. This is divisive stuff. This is racist stuff that is being taught to our children. And it's the BBC. It's Newsround telling them. So it must be true is how they're going to see it. And their parents, I think, will be absolutely horrified. But I, the thing is, it's actually, I mean, I know your organisation, Don't Divide Us, have written to the BBC. You have to make a complaint. You go to the BBC first. Ofcom won't consider a, any uh, any a, a, a complaint until after the BBC have dealt with it. I don't I don't see why that should be the case. But uh, basically, pointing out that under the BBC Charter, they are a duty. They have a duty legally to provide impartial news and information to help people understand and engage with the world around them. This isn't impartial. It's not news. It's not information. Um, must be inclusive, uh, and they must uh, express a, a, an existence of a range of views that that is appropriately reflected. They didn't do that. Particularly, they've got a duty of care for children. The welfare of children must take priority over any editorial, edi editorial requirements. I mean, they failed on every possible ground. And they would have known that when they put it on the Newsround website. It, it beggars belief, Julia. You know, I mean, we, me and you and lots of other people pay £3.8 billion in our fees to yeah. the BBC. Their total for 2021-22 was £5.6 I think. So a lot over half we pay. Um, they're meant to be a service to us, mm -hmm. right? Telling us that we are either, you know, oppressed victims that need white well, that's allies... that's you. I, I can see your forward. skin colour. So you're the yeah, victim. Get out of your seat, You're Julia. the victim. Get out of your seat. Look, at you, with your, look at you with all your victim status there. And, and I'm your oppressor. There you go. That's right. That's right. I mean, it beggars belief. I, I really think some, you know, it has. We we've asked. We in in our in our um, letter of complaint, we've asked for them to re-edit the content with an opposing view and to issue an apology. Or well, just don't have um, the content at all. I mean, I'm not. I don't want it to be censored. I'm just I'm not entirely sure why there there are a lot more important concepts that six year olds need to know about other than this abject racist nonsense. But there we are. Thank you for being a voice of common sense, which is what Don't Divide Us do. Uh, Alka Segal Cuthbert is director of Don't Divide Us. Thank you for that.